Construction champions, it's your host, Ron Newsbaum, and we're here for another amazing episode of Construction Champions Podcast, where we're burning the house down. Every Monday, every Thursday, you can find myself here, but what you can really find is an amazing guest talking about what it takes to be a construction champion. And I'm just going to go ahead and do the public service announcement right now for everybody is that when you see me drink this, this is water. It's not a beer. I, I took a sip earlier on the screen and I was like, Dave's going to think I'm over here drinking, but it <laughs> is <I'm> not. water. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with that? <laughs> so with that being said, Dave, it is great to have you on the show today. Hey, thanks for having me, Ron. Uh <laughs> As a guest talking with you earlier, we got a lot of uh, good discussion going, I think, for today. Absolutely, man. I'm excited. I'm ready to rock and roll. But before we get started, why don't you tell all the construction champions out there a little bit about yourself and what got you here to today? You got it. Well, this is, um, I'm out here in California and started off in a small family roofing business. And, um, the plan was I was going to go to college, get a business degree, come out, and uh, start learning the ropes from my dad. Well, as soon as I did that, he had a heart attack, and I've got I got thrown into the business, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I'll tell you, you know, business degree or not has nothing to do with it. You know, really getting into the nuts and bolts, as you know. So really struggled with that, uh, but and I'll tell you, the best thing I ever did was hired a coach. And we started doing some things. He really got me focused in on how I should be running my business. And things just took off from there. And we we focused on our commercial work, uh, built a service department, and really um, developed a good business, which I sold about eight years ago. And got a little bored and started this podcast back then there wasn't any, any, any podcasters in the podcasting space, you know, in the, in the roofing space. So jumped into that, been doing it ever since coaching came out of it. So I do uh, coaching with roofing contractors really focused on the one to $5 million uh, in annual sales, smaller contractors. And um, it's been going great. I love it. I love it, man. And uh, it's exciting to be here. So for all the listeners, you guys know I, I hang out in some Facebook groups and stuff. And that's how I ended up meeting Dave is there was a post about who should I have on my podcast from uh, Tom Reber, who's been on our show. And I'll tell you what, the comments were dominated by people recommending Dave. So I immediately wow. reached out to him and I was like, hey, I know Tom's going to be reaching out to you, but if you got this many people saying that you're bringing value, I want to have you on Construction Champions podcast. So here we are. I'm excited about it. I appreciate it. And likewise, and Tom is uh, a great guy. He's been on the show a couple, two or three times. It's always uh, entertaining, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, man. <laughs> Love that guy. <laughs> I love him too. So, but let's dive in there. And I'm going to ask you the million dollar question. And that is what makes a construction champion? Well, I, I, I think really what makes a champion is someone who really digs into their why, why they're doing this. Why are you running a business? Why are you a roofing contractor? And understanding that your destination because it's different for everybody success it's different for everyone and i think that's really important is understanding that you know some 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 folks want to run a smaller kind of lifestyle business where they can spend time with their family others want to be king of the world and all they care about is you know pumping out the chest and you know i do 50 million dollars and i'm going to get picked up by private equity and i'm going to be a Old Jed's a millionaire, you know, so I think really understanding that is important because without that, you can't build a roadmap to get there. I love it. And, you know, it's it's one of the first things we lose sight at, of when we go out there, no matter why you started the business. Most of the time, that's the first thing that you forget 
It's the actual why I'm out here and why I'm the entrepreneur. But that should really be our driving light as we continue to grow it. When you get into the trenches and you, you're putting out fires and you're losing this, I mean, it's, it's really true. You know, you're you're into the business for one or two years, you're grinding it out. It's nothing like you expected it to be. And a lot of times you're just trying to keep your head above water and you lose that um, that direction. Why you're doing this, you know, that, hey, this ain't fun. <laughs> Yeah, no. And another thing you cover there that really, I think is impactful, and I think more people need to understand is, like, where do you want to be at? And what makes you happy? Like, it's, we're always chasing, it always seems like guys are just chasing scale, scale, growth, 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 like you said, I'm gonna be the king of the mountain, when you might be just happier doing two, three million dollars a year and make all the money that you want to make, be able to spend all the time with your family. But we don't, I don't, I think we just lose sight of that because we get the, the, it can become very ego s around the local construction industry or even the nationwide. And what's the number everybody wants to know? Top line revenue. That's right, man. Yeah, and, uh, you know, that's, well, I'd be selling books and putting on seminars, you know, if I just focused on how to 20 extra business, you know, mm -hmm. but it's all about the profit, you know, it's all about the margin in this business. I mean, we're not selling carpets here, you know, we don't make it up in volume. And this is where I see so many contractors um, make the mistakes because anybody can, you know, grow a business if we're, if we're cheap enough, but you know, it's like the same, you know, you know, uh, top line sales are um, vanity, it's vanity numbers and profit is sanity. And I always throw in cash flow as reality. Mm. It's um, what, what it's all about. I love that. So how you've been around the industry, like how do we start to change this mindset around it? Like where we measure everything off of these. Cause I I'm with you. Like I'm a profit will roll everything. You can do whatever top line and you can be in the net ego. Like you can literally lose money, but be the big dog in the room, or you can just be the guy doing what needs to happen and making a good profit and, and providing for your employees, your family, everybody around you. But that's just not where the industry's mindset is. Yeah. You know, when you're growing and you're growing fast, there's so many problems that go with it. Uh, trying to find labor to do the jobs. You know, we're throwing B and C, D players out there. <clears throat> Harder to manage the projects. We're running by the seat of our pants. We're running out of cash because we're growing so fast. You know, that's so, whoops, you know, and it's, it's difficult, you know, and, and some of our biggest years have not been our most profitable. And we actually uh, were in that situation, had some big years and really kind of getting out of control. And when we scaled that plan to scale it back a little bit and focus on our margins, you know, work less, make more money. It's, um, I think it's really true. And it, to really focus on right sizing your business where you can, you can make the money. I mean, that's where <laughs> we want to be. It's, it's a hell of a lot easier and more enjoyable, you know, and uh, most of the um, contractors, they come to me you know, and say, Hey, you know, I ask them, what's your goal? You know, wh where do you want to go? Well, I'm doing 5 million now and I'm going to go to 10 million. Well, are you making money at five? Well, no. I say, well, you're not going to make money at 10. You're just going to lose money faster. You know, so we've got to build that, that foundation is the first thing, you know, strong foundation that we can build on. And it really starts with that. It starts with really understanding where we're going, building out, a business plan to get us there, a roadmap. But if we don't know where we're going first uh, and we don't plan accordingly, have the right people in place, it's tough. It's tough. And there's, you know, you can go out of business just as easily if you're, 
you know, $50 million company as you are for a $10 million company. That is 100% true. Uh, they they fall, they, no matter how big they are, they can fall. I like to yeah. say, so, I mean, I've had some uh, great guests on here and what some of the stuff we've talked about is like, instead of talking about top line revenue, let's talk about what you need to make. And then how, what does that look like? What is the lifestyle that you want? And like, I think that's where we start to change some of this narrative. And if we, we're having a conversation around that, then instead of working back from a revenue number to how much profit can we make? Like, what does that look? We can say, this is what I need to make. What are the multiples on that in order to make that happen? And then you you have a, that roadmap that you're talking about to try to get to where you want to go. Well, uh, you know, one of the first things you've got to do is you got to understand your numbers. And we all talk about knowing the numbers, know your numbers. Well, what does that mean? You know, it, it, it means that your job costing your jobs, that you know where you're making your money and where you're not. So you can make improvements. Uh, we we really have the the basis of business what we teach is based on a three-legged stool you get three legs of the stool and to keep it strong and solid you've got to keep things in balance and those legs are we've got to sell work we've got to do work and we've got to keep score and all three of those legs have to be strong and what we see is you know maybe um you came up through the trades, you know, and we know how to do the work. We can get that done, but we don't know how to sell. We're not good at sales. We don't like sales. Well, nothing happens until somebody sells something. So you better be good at sales. <laughs> Otherwise, you're in the wrong business. <laughs> so we can get the work done, uh, just sell the work perhaps. And the problem that we all have these days is how do you get the work done? You know, we don't have the people because, you know, the money's made in the sale. Production's job is to protect that profit. And we've got a lot of slippage in doing the job. We we talk about how all of this flows together when we've got our processes together, our sales process. Now we've got the handoff to production. How do we get that sale, that that project explain to production, making sure that they take care of Mrs. Jones, you know, prize flowers or whatever it is. We've got to communicate that, get the job done, organized in a way that we're profitable and that we know we're profitable. And then we come around to keeping the score, which is that job costing, controlling all those costs, understanding your financial statements, what it means, having budgeting, so we know what we're shooting for and we can get our invoices out. I mean, I can see companies that, you know, Hey, you know, another month from now, you are going to have a cash problem. You know, you've got to collect these receivables. You've got to get your bills out. You've got to do these things. And this is where um, our scorekeeping comes in. And the numbers is that account, that bookkeeping, the accounting, leg of our of our business has to be strong and i'll tell you what this this is why really one of the things that's developed out of what we're doing it started with the podcast and then uh i was asked to do some coaching with contractors got into that but what i really found is that this the numbers are a problem and i'm really kind of focused particularly on these smaller contractors of explaining, understand, getting them to understand, teaching them about their numbers, because it really is pretty simple when you break it down, just understand the basics, the basics of running your business, the state, you know, the, the blocking, tackling, doing it consistently every day. And I, we really find that that's the key to running a business, a successful, sustainable business and one that you can enjoy where you're not running around with your hair on fire all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I knew I liked you. I don't hear very many people use the three-legged stall analogy, but I love it. It's one I have used for the last 15 years. Uh, I did a little bit different. I always talk about is that uh, it's a three-legged stall. 
you have the company, the customer, and the employee, and everybody has to win or else the store falls over, which is the yep. project that at the end of the day. So, but I love that. I love what you're talking about. And like you said, it's not, we make numbers and all of this into something that's like this, like Mount Everest, when right. it's really not, like it's not as hard as people make it out to seem to start to learn and to start to develop a knowledge base on this. And, you know, I'm just a Marine that was just a guy in construction. And I think we let like that narrative right there dictate that, oh, there's somebody else that needs to understand the numbers. I'm not that person, but it's not like this isn't Mount Everest. You can learn to understand the numbers. And, you know, and, and you know this, it's it's the implementation where we have the problems. We we go to, you know, here's a stack of seminar books over there that I've been to, you know, and, you, you know, you're all jazzed up. You come back from these things and go, man, that makes sense. I'm going to I'm going to get these things going Monday morning. Things hit the fan and, you know, now we're off to, you know, putting out fires again and we never have an opportunity. Well, we just because we're out of control, we don't implement and it's all about the implementation. And this is why we try to keep things simple. You know, don't, don't, you know, there, there are no silver bullets, you know, it comes down to, you know, really just doing the basics, doing them well and doing them consistently, but get a process, stick with it and implement and get it done and manage these things. That's where our focus should be. Absolutely. So how do you get these guys that are out there? I know we got them listening to us right now and they're probably dealing with a fire. So they're not 100% listening. So <laughs> if that's you right now, listen up because Dave's going to tell you how you, how do you get out of that mindset and start to be able to implement some of this stuff that is going to be able to save you from chasing fires all the time? Well, again, I think it's keeping things simple. We have um, we have a one page business plan, and this is on our our site. You can download it for free at the roofershow.com. But it it just ten things, simple, easy to follow. And it lays things out, which is, you know, really understanding, Number one, what it is that you're doing. We see a big problem with contractors. They're doing, taking on too many services. You know, roofing contractor becomes, oh yeah, I have requests to do decks, all of this basements, you know, and the next thing you know, you're doing too many things. And this was the lesson that I learned. I said, we brought a coach in ourselves and this really changed everything that's where i got the three-legged stool from you know stole it from him <laughs> <laughs> but we did residential we did commercial roofing we'd do anything dog houses whatever it was and the first thing he did was hey where do you make your money i don't know we do roofing well, we broke those down into profit centers or loss centers in our case. We we took the residential and the commercial, split those out and really looked at where we were making our money. And it turns out we couldn't make any money in residential space. You know, we just weren't good at it. It's not that, you know, one's better than the other. But for us, we just couldn't get it done. We had callbacks. We had constant problems. And what we did was we just said, all right, we're going to focus on our commercial business. And we did that. Things just took off and we started making some real money. And I think that's the first thing that you need to do. And, and then really understand your customer. Who is that ideal customer? What makes them that ideal customer? And where do they hang out? How do we get them? How are we going to differentiate our business so we're not just a commodity and it really starts with that. And then we have a next step and next step. And that comes down to we're big ones for checklists, you know, and we, everybody talks about systems and processes. It can really be broken down into a checklist. You know, you get on a plane, 
they go through a checklist. That's their process. Well, they've flown that, that plane a thousand times, but they still go over that same checklist. And that's really what we're talking about when we talk about process and systems is that keep it simple. I love it because that's what it's got to be at the end of the day to get to get that implementation or implementation that you're talking about. It's going to have to be something simple. And having an understanding, I guess I would challenge a lot of our listeners out there that are listening to this conversation right now is have you ever even written out a business plan? Do you understand? Like I was just I met with a guy this morning. And we were in, that's what he helped. He like, he does business plans locally here for entrepreneurs. It's like, it just kind of his way to give back throughout his time. And he's like, we way overcomplicate this stuff. Right. And I love what you're like, there's a free resource. Even if you've written one out before, here's now a resource that you can go and utilize and do a one page business plan. And I, I challenge even more the people that have done them before to go redo it like this for where you're currently at and then start to compare that like that original why to where you're at right now with that business plan. And it changes, you know, we always did one every year and we had a facilitator come in and we would do a retreat with our key people and would really talk these things through. What is it that we want to do? Where are we going? And we can get that destination. See that mountaintop over there? Here's where we're going to, here's how we're going to get there. I'm going to lead you there, but we're all going to understand where it is that we're going and how we're going to get there. But more importantly is, is the why, you know, what's in it for me, you know, for each of our people and so forth. And you've got to make that 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 why for everyone that they can see that there's, a future there's a there's a career path and it's really important to set that up and things change you know every year we, we we would you know tweak it but if you don't really take a step back see the forest through the trees you know you, you again you're just out there wandering around through the wilderness you know you, you're, you're not going to achieve those goals well yeah you can't tweak what you don't know so like, and that's another thing that we see is like you people making adjustments without even knowing like, oh, if I just do this, it'll change everything. Well, what are you basing that on? Exactly. Exactly. Is this, is this getting us closer to the goals that we're setting? And, you know, one of the really key things about writing out this plan is that you can roll this out. We had a rollout every year. So everybody in the company understood where it was that we're going, why we're doing this, why it's important, why you need to focus on quality and the customer and really understanding how do we give that five-star experience to them and why we're doing it, why it's important. You're going to get more work. You guys are going to have more opportunity. Everybody's going to make more money. So laying that out and being clear is really what we need, you know, in leadership to, 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 to take your company a certain direction where it is that you want to go. And they need, all need to understand that. Awesome, man. Well, I love it. You're a wealth of knowledge for everybody out there in the entire <laughs> industry. Uh, so for all the champ construction champions out there that are listening, if they wanted to find you, connect with you, learn more about what you do, uh, where's the best places for them to do that? Well, first check out our podcast. It's called the roofer show and we've got uh, over 350 episodes. Like I say, I've been doing this for a while <laughs> every week, you know, it's not easy, right? <laughs> but mm -hmm. I love doing it. So start there and you can go to the roofer show.com, but we do coaching various coaching programs, uh, we have mastermind groups, which I think everybody should be in a mastermind group or a peer group of some kind where you're working with networking with other contractors on a regular basis. We're learning together. That's something that I've always been involved with and has really made a difference in my business. 
um, whether it's a mentor or a coach or get in some kind of a group setting where you're meeting regularly. So we have the mastermind groups and we, we have, you know, as I said, I'm doing a lot of coaching in the uh, financial area. So I've got the roofer show, I've got the roofer coach, we've got the roofer mastermind and I get the roofer CFO. So any of those, but Hey, I'd love to talk to you, whether you're in roofing or uh, another space, as I said, you know, I started off, I'm a retired roofing contractor and love to work with contractors to help them get to whatever that why, whatever that destination is that we want, but understand what that is. So just, you know, start with the roofershow.com, go to the contact page. You can click on the big button. Uh, we'll have a discovery call and we'll chat, see if, uh, see if I can help you with your business. Awesome, man. Well, I agree with everything you said, especially with being around a group of peers and being in mastermind groups. It's there's no other way. It's just that's the way it should be. And the sooner that you get involved with that kind of stuff, the sooner you will understand why people like Dave and myself would say that no matter what you're doing. Like now I'm in software and technology ones before I was in construction ones like it's the only way to get around the right people that will help you get to where you want to go. So really builds the confidence in your decision-making. I, I, I think one of the things it does, you think you're the only guy that's screwed up in this industry. <laughs> hey, it's tough, man, but we all have things that we can learn from each other and we can teach from, other, you know, teach, teach each other. So. Absolutely. Dave, thank you for being on the show today. Ron, it's a pleasure. Really enjoying our conversation and uh, love what you're doing out there and keep at it. I will, man. And I enjoyed the conversation as well. So construction champions, another episode. And I want to know how complicated are you making things? I know this might seem like a simple question, but for all go look in the mirror moment of the show is Go look in the mirror and be like, am I making this overly complicated? Because chances are you probably are. I know I do. I know I have. Sometimes you have to just step away and be like, hmm, this could probably be a lot simpler than what I'm making it. And that's not a bad thing. We have to get out of our headspace and on a mindset that where simplicity doesn't mean that you're simple because of that. It means that being simple is what gets the results that you're trying to get to. You know, that's a bridge I had to cross where I had to understand that just because it's simple doesn't mean it's bad. It actually means it's better because more people can take advantage of it. More people can utilize it. So as you grow your team, you don't have to worry about complex meetings to get people up to speed on what's happening within the company and for two a free resource that i hear i heard dave drop out there the roofer show what was it again dave the roofer show.com where you can pick up the one page business plan one page simple take you a few hours but it'll get you started on the process of planning that process is so important i love it I love free resources, guys. Like, take advantage of this stuff. Like, people pay a lot of money to go put something to other, like that business plan. This gives you an opportunity to put something to other and take a look at it. Like, it's going to take some time. You're going to have to invest in it, but it's one page and it might change the trajectory of your business here in 2024. Think about that. Like how powerful is that off of something that you learned on a podcast and then took advantage of a free resource? Like this is why we're here at Construction Champions Podcast. Because we want to continue to bring value, continue to put you in a position where you can level up and grow and learn and change your mindset. Because when your mindset around the construction industry changes, the entire construction industry starts to change. And that's why I started this show. So Construction Champions, make sure you check out all of our great sponsors in the show notes below. And until next time, be the champion you were meant to be.
Introducing BuilderCons, the construction communication software that's changing the game. Say goodbye to communication challenges and hello to effortless communication. With BuilderComs, you can communicate with clients, share pictures, videos, and documents, and keep clients informed about the progress of their projects. Get real-time updates, prevent miscommunications and delays, and ensure successful projects. Don't let bad communication ruin your construction projects. Try BuilderComs today. Visit us at buildercoms.com.